in chapter 10 that is some applications of differential geometry in this module that means module 5 we shall learn about the applications of differential geometry in general theory of relativity. Now, general theory of relativity is slightly different from special theory of relativity, which we have learned in our module 4. Here, the gravity or the gravitational force has a great impact on the space time. Now, in this module that means, module 5 of chapter 10, we shall learn a special type of metric for a space time that is called spherically symmetric space time. And in this module, we shall learn about the Schwarzschild metric and we shall see that the Schwarzschild metric is a static metric. Static metric means it is time reversal. That means, in place of t, if we take minus t, then also the line element remains same. So, all these things we shall learn in this module. So, title of module 5 of chapter 10 is applications of differential geometry in general theory of relativity and cosmology. Here, we shall mainly learn about spherically symmetric metric and that is specially a Schwarzschild metric. Now, Einstein developed general theory of relativity in 1915 that is 100 years back in order to discuss gravitation. In general theory of relativity, the geometrical structure of the space is a pseudo Riemannian. That means, the line element is not positive definite. Here, we shall discuss a special type of metric only for this module known as spherically symmetric metric. The general form of the line element for a spherically symmetric space time with respect to the coordinate system r theta pi t can be written as this one, this is the line element d square equal to p d t square minus 2 q d t d r minus u d r square minus v d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. T is the time factor here, time coordinate and r theta phi are the space coordinate. So, for spherically symmetric space time, at first we can write in this form, the line element can be written in this form, where p, q, u and v are functions of t and r. Now, if we choose r equals to square root of v, as a new radial coordinate, because r is the radius of the space. So, we are taking r equals to v to the power 1 by 2 as a new radial coordinate. The above line element will take the form in this way d s square equal to p dash of the function of t and r d t square plus 2 q dash, which is also a function of t and r, d t dr minus u dash, 
d r square minus r square in the bracket d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. And arranging the terms, we can write in this form at 1 by p dash p dash d t minus q dash d r whole square minus in the bracket q dash square by p dash plus u dash d r square minus but last term r square d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. Now, in general p dash d t minus q dash d r may not be perfect differential, but if we multiply by some integrating factor like w t r, the expression becomes exact and in that case we can write that exact form in d t equals to w p dash d t minus u dash d r. So, w is the integrating factor here, which makes p dash d t minus q dash d r into an exact form. So, the line element with this new time coordinate becomes. So, d capital T becomes a new time coordinate and the line element will take with the new time coordinate in this form 1 by p dash w square d capital T square minus in the first bracket q dash square by p dash plus u dash d r square minus r square d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. Now, if I write p dash w square to the power minus 1 that means, if we substitute 1 by p dash w square by e to the power nu and q dash square by p dash plus u dash as e to the power lambda. So, that the line element takes the simple form d a square equals to e to the power nu d capital T square minus e to the power lambda d r square minus r square within the bracket first bracket d theta square plus sin square theta d phi square. So, this is the general form of the line element for a spherically symmetric space time, where the two unknown functions nu and lambda are functions of capital T and R. Now, this one can be also expressed in this form d a square equals to minus e to the power lambda d r square minus r square d theta square minus r square sin square theta d phi square plus c square e to the power mu d t square, where c is the velocity of light. Now, we shall determine the values of this mu and lambda in our 
next steps. Where lambda mu are functions of r. Now, the coefficients of dr square and dt square have been selected as exponentials in order to ensure that the signature of dr square is minus 2. And we have also seen from our previous slides that d a square have the exponential terms. Now, let us replace x 1 equal to r, x 2 equal to theta, x 3 equal to phi and x to the power 4 equal to c t. Then, the non-zero components of the fundamental metric tensor are g 1 1 equals to minus e to the power lambda, g 2 2 equals to minus r square, g 3 3 equals to minus r square sin square theta and g 4 4 equals to e to the power mu. So, these are the coefficients of the fundamental metric tensors g i j, which we have learnt in our previous chapters. And other g i j's are 0 for i not equal to j. Then the determinant of g i j generally we write it in as g is equal to minus r to the power 4 e to the power lambda plus mu sin square theta. So, the determinant of g i j is coming to this expression and thus we can find the non-zero components of the conjugate symmetric fundamental tensors that is uh, the contravariant reciprocal tensors g upper 1 1 equals to e to the power minus lambda with a minus sign g 2 2 equals to minus 1 by r square g 3 3 equals to minus 1 by r square sin square theta and g 4 4 that is g upper 4 4 equals to e to the power minus mu. So, these are the components of conjugate symmetric fundamental tensors and with the help of this g i j's and upper g i j's we can find the Christopher symbols for this metric and you have calculated all the Christopher symbols. So, here the Christopher symbol of first kind that is 1, 1, 1 is coming to 1 by 2 del g 1 1 by del r and if we just take the partial derivative of g 1 1 with respect to r, then it is coming to minus 1 by 2 e to the power lambda lambda dash. Where this dash denotes the differentiation of lambda with respect to r. So, wherever this dash will be there, it means that it denotes the differentiation with respect to r. And consequently, the Christopher symbol of second kind that is gamma 
1 1 1 which is equal to g upper 1 1 Christopher symbol 1 1 comma 1 and it gives half lambda dash. And similarly, we can easily calculate, you can try to calculate these values that is gamma 1 2 2 all are the components of Christopher symbols of second kind that gamma 1 2 2 is coming to minus r e to the power minus lambda, gamma 1 3 3 equals to minus r e to the power minus lambda sin square theta and gamma 1 4 4 is equal to 1 by 2 e to the power mu minus lambda mu dash, where again mu dash means the differentiation of mu with respect to r. and gamma 2 1 2 is coming as 1 by r, gamma 2 3 3 equals to minus sin theta cos theta and gamma 3 2 3 equals to cot theta. Also gamma 3 1 3 equals to 1 by r and gamma 4 1 4 equals to 1 by 2 mu dash. So, all the non-zero components of Christopher symbol of second kind have been calculated and the values are given here. So, we can also see that the Christopher symbol of first kind for 2 2 comma 1 equals to r, 1 2 comma 2 equals to minus r and 2 3 comma 3 equals to minus r square sin theta cos theta. Similarly, the Christopher symbol of first kind for 4 4 comma 1 equals to minus 1 by 2 e to the power mu mu dash. Christopher symbol of first kind for 3 3 comma 2 is equal to r square sin theta cos theta and 1 4 comma 4 equals to 1 by 2 e to the power mu mu dash. Three three comma one, the Christopher symbol for first kind for three three comma one is coming to R sin square theta, and for Christopher symbol of first kind for one three comma three is equal to minus R sin square theta. So, with the help of all these Christopher symbols of first kind and second kind we can calculate the components of Ricci tensor, which we know that it is the tensor of type 0 2 and it denoted by R i j and the expression for R i j is equal to this one del square log root over mod g del x i del x j minus del del x alpha Christopher symbol of second kind alpha i j plus gamma alpha beta j gamma beta alpha i minus gamma beta i j del log root over mod g by del x beta. So, this is the expression of r i j which we have obtained earlier in our earlier chapter. So, just putting the values of all these Christopher symbols and the values of the g, we get the components in this way. 
that means R11 have this expression that is del 2 log root mod g by del r square minus del del x 1 gamma 1 1 plus gamma 1 1 1 gamma 1 1 1 plus gamma 2 2 1 gamma 2 2 1 and so on. So, we can just put the values of i and j and we get the expression for r 1 1 and again if we put the values of Christopher symbols and the value of g, we get after a brief calculation, we have r 1 1 equals to 1 by 2 mu double dash. That means, the second order derivative of mu with respect to r plus 1 by 4 mu dash square minus lambda dash by r minus 1 by 4 lambda dash mu dash. Similarly, we can get r 2 2 and which is equal to the value of r 3 3 with multiply by cos x square theta. So, this is the relation between r 2 2 and r 3 3 and the expression is coming to this one. r 4 4 has this expression that is equal to e to the power minus lambda plus mu and within the third bracket this expression and other r i j's are 0 for i not equal to j. And with this components of r i j's, we have the curvature invariant that is capital R equals to g i j r i j. That means, the scalar curvature of the space is coming to this expression that is equal to 2 by r square plus e to the power minus lambda minus 2 by r square plus 2 by r lambda dash plus half lambda dash mu dash minus mu double dash minus half mu dash square minus 2 by r mu dash. And thus, the necessary and sufficient condition that a space with spherically symmetric metric be in Einstein space is that r equal to 0. Now, from r 1 1 equal to 0, we have this condition. The value of lambda dash by r is coming to this. And from r 4 4 equal to 0, we have this expression e to the power minus lambda plus mu in the bracket this one is equal to 0. Now, simplifying this value, we get this relation minus 1 by 4 mu dash lambda dash plus half mu double dash plus 1 by 4 mu dash square equal to minus 1 by r mu dash. So, using the above result, we get lambda dash by r equal to minus 1 by r mu dash. That means, if we integrate, we get lambda equals to minus mu plus constant. Now, from r 2 2 equals to 0, we have this expression e to the power minus lambda within the bracket 1 minus half r lambda dash plus half r mu dash equals to 1. Now, if we set e to the power mu equals to nu, then mu equals to log nu and mu dash equals to 1 by nu nu dash. Therefore, mu dash e to the power mu equals to nu dash and the above equation reduces to nu plus r nu dash equals to 1. That means, nu dash by 1 minus nu equals to 1 by r. So, writing in this form, it is d mu d nu by 
1 minus nu equals to dr by r. And integrating we get nu equals to 1 minus k by r, where k being a constant. Again from g 4 4 we have e to the power mu equals to nu that is 1 minus k by r. We can say this one as k or kappa whatever you like. So, thus the metric takes the form this one d s square equal to minus 1 minus k by r to the power minus 1 d r square minus r square d theta square minus r square sin square theta d phi square plus c square 1 minus k by r d t square. So, this one this metric is known as Schwarzschild metric which was given by Carl Schwarzschild in 1916 and the space time in general theory of relativity is called Schwarzschild space time. Now, a space time is called static if there exists a special coordinate system for which all the metric coefficients that means, the coefficients of x, y, z are time independent and also the line element is invariant under the time reversal. That means, if we take instead of t as minus t, then the line element will remain same. Now, the Schwarzschild space time is a good example of a static space time. That means, it is invariant under time reversal. Thus, in module 5 of chapter 10, we have learned a special type of metric in general theory of relativity known as spherically symmetric metric and we have deduced an expression for Schwarzschild metric which is a special type of spherically symmetric metric and it is a static metric that means, it is invariant under the time reversal. All these things we have seen in this module. So, with these things we end this module.